This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Now that the dust has finally settled on the Infinity Saga, the epic interconnected series of 22 films which finally saw Iron Man, Captain America, and Thanos complete their stories and bow out, I think the only thing left to ask is, what's next for the MCU? I know a lot of people are excited for Loki's solo series, WandaVision, the Black Widow movie, Guardians Volume 3, and a whole host of rumoured or as of yet unannounced projects. But the thing that I'm currently hyped for the most is, well it's in the title of the video, I'm not going to say Doctor Strange 2 am I, that would be f***ing weird. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier for me is poised to be one of the best MCU instalments yet. It's got potential to expand upon the most recent developments in Endgame, harken back to the MCU's past, and usher in a bright new age in its future. Its place on Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus, looks to meld the scale and action of the big budget tentpole movies with the more in-depth long form storytelling of the best television efforts. So let's look at where Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes were left, and why their first MCU outing together has the potential to be spectacular. Cut the check. If there's one thing that's always been kind of a shame about the Russo's MCU tenure, it's that they never really got to tell a story with as much focus as their first efforts, 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier. That film relied on about four principal leads and a handful of villains, who not only didn't feel squished for screen time, but all came under the same collective banner of Hydra. As such, the battle lines between the protagonists and their central conflict was succinct and clear. Now that's not to say that the three movies that followed, Civil War, Infinity War and Endgame, are bad movies, or even that their huge scale and stable of characters should be thought of as their failings. They build on top of one another logically, and save for a few missteps, are immensely satisfying stories with well-drawn characters and memorable moments. But all of those movies are team-up movies, even the one that has Captain America's name in the title. That's fine, it made sense for where we were heading with these superheroes, and the final battle for the Infinity Stones was fast approaching. But now that the Infinity Saga is done, I think it's time to flip the switch the other way. The Disney Plus show doesn't need to set up any overarching stories in the larger MCU, or introduce entirely new big players like a Spider-Man or a Black Panther, so why not do what worked so well for films like The Winter Soldier or The First Iron Man, and tell a lean, focused tale? Right now, the only cast members confirmed for the series are Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, obviously, Emily Van Camp, and Daniel Bruhl. Obviously, we can expect more announcements to be made, but I really hope the focus remains on their characters. But now that you're standing here, I just realized... There's a bit of green in the blue of your eyes. Again, because of where the story was headed within the larger MCU at play, we only got to see Zemo face the Captain once. Whilst it might be a new Captain America, the Sam Wilson flavoured capsicle that will lead the series now has an excellent big bad all ready to go, and Zemo really deserves more screen time and more respect from the audience. Debuting in Captain America Civil War, Daniel Brühl's helmet Zemo was probably the most surprising thing to come out of the movie. Everyone was looking forward to seeing the heroes going at it, to see Cap and Tony clash, and relatively little was known about Zemo's role before release. Rather than directly adapting his abilities and status from the comics, the movie went in a much smaller, more intimate direction. Zemo is just one man on a mission to avenge his family, who tragically passed in the wake of the Battle of Sokovia. Unlike a lot of the MCU's villains, he was smart and calculating and genuinely had a decent and well thought out reason for doing what he was doing. An empire toppled by its enemies can rise again, but one which crumbles from within? That's dead. He's also one of the only MCU villains to have a substantial impact on the story going forward. Pretty much the sole reason why the Avengers lost in Infinity War can be traced back to Zemo's machinations to divide Steve and Tony. He was equal parts sympathetic and menacing, and I think having him confirmed for the series is a huge plus. Zemo is excellent in his sole appearance. Imagine what they can do with him now that he's going to have the breadth of screen time afforded to a character like Wilson Fisk. This is the kind of villain that could take the top spot from Thanos as the MCU's most well-developed antagonist, if done right. And let's not forget, Zemo was the one who revealed Bucky's worst secret to Tony Stark, so the former Hydra assassin will no doubt have a strong distaste for the villain. Zemo saw him as a means to an end, a tool in his mission to divide the Avengers. Much like Hydra, Zemo stripped Bucky of his humanity by treating him as a weapon to be handled. Coming face to face with this man again will surely prove very interesting. Or maybe he'll take on a different role than an out and out antagonist. After all, he did decode a massive amount of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s covert files, so he stands to know a great deal about how Hydra operates, 
and what further secrets and plans they might hold. So if the newly christened Cap has to go up against Hydra, maybe we could be in for a Hannibal Lecter style Zemo, who is visited behind bars to gain information. Zemo's greatest strength is his ability to think 10 steps ahead and get exactly what he wants from his opponent without them even realising it. So this would be a great way to explore this, not to mention it provides our new captain with a challenge he simply can't punch his way out of. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Sam has spent time in the Avengers and has experienced that superhero life. Everybody in this room is about that superhero life. Now hold on there, Rhodey. Bucky hasn't had a proper stab at it just yet. He's fought alongside the Avengers a handful of times, but most of his story has been about recovery. Now that Steve Rogers has had his magnificent exit, there's room for both of these characters to step up in the wake of a Marvel Universe five years on. Rather than being shunned by the world, Bucky might just find it needs him. And Sam now has a huge responsibility on his shoulders in making sure that the world doesn't turn without its captain. In America. When Bucky was finally undusted after five years, I was kind of hoping he and Tony Stark might get some sort of exchange in the final battle. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, so we didn't really get any kind of closure between them regarding the open wound of Civil War. Bucky killed Howard and Maria Stark under the influence of Hydra. It would have been nice to see a more weathered Tony Stark come face to face with Bucky again. I'd like to think that now time has passed, Tony might be able to move forward and even forgive the ex-Winter Soldier. Even if it would have been the briefest of exchanges, it makes sense with everything else going on in Endgame's third act that if anything close to this exchange exists, it wisely got left on the cutting room floor. But that doesn't mean it can't be explored in some other way. We already saw Tony leave messages beyond the grave for his wife and daughter, so why would he not do the same for Bucky? I don't think we're going to get a posthumous Tony Stark cameo in the series, nor should we, but what if Tony left something for Bucky to help provide us with a little closure? Maybe Barf? By nearly augmented retroframing, or Barf, God, I gotta work on that acronym. Well, you can't, because you're dead. You're dead. You are dead. Bop, boop, beep, bop, bop, boop, bop. You're dead. Anyway, maybe Bath could be reintroduced as a gift from Tony to Bucky. As he suggested in Civil War, it's a way to come to terms with traumatic memories. Hydra's programming may allegedly be gone following Shuri's work, but that doesn't mean the emotional scars have healed. So we not only get a bit of closure between Tony and Bucky, we get to see the latter move on from his tragic past. Not to mention it's a neat little way of diving into old Winter Soldier missions. Much like how we saw Tony become a fly on the wall for a tense conversation between his teenage self and his parents, Bucky could watch memories play out in front of him showing the Winter Soldier wreaking havoc. Let's not also forget that Sam and Natasha were good friends too, and they spent a sizeable chunk of their time fighting together as fully fledged Avengers and off the grid in between Civil War and Infinity War. We haven't yet seen Sam's reaction to finding out about her sacrifice, so it would be nice to flesh that out in the series. And seeing the people who cared about Nat deal with her death is a neat way of honouring the character who didn't happen to get a massive funeral at the end of the last movie. I think the goodbye between Cap, Bucky and Sam in Endgame was sweet, but the series could flesh out a little bit more about what Steve Rogers was up to. If he did indeed live in the same reality as the one we've seen the modern day Cap reside, wouldn't it be cool if he left some helpful hints for his best friends now that they're going to be taking on the job of saving the world? We're all wondering if Sam Wilson will remain a regular man or if he'll juice up on some super soldier serum when he becomes the next captain, but of course, there's none of the serum left. Unless maybe Steve Rogers picked up a vial? From the very same day he gained his powers during his time hopping trip to return the Infinity Stones and left it in a secure location for Sam to find? That would be dope. I mean really, I just want to see Mackie throw the shield at someone full pelt like Evans used to, okay Marvel? <gasps> Eight minutes, Cap. Working on it. Don't say it! Don't you say it left? Come on! Because of the relatively grounded nature of the lead's powers and their enemies being decidedly less purple space warlord and more lots of highly trained dudes with guns, I think it's safe to assume we can expect to see action evocative of the Winter Soldier. I want to see intense close quarters combat, high speed frenetic car chases, and a good helping of bullets. Now! And explosions. The Winter Soldier did a great job of putting Cap in challenging situations where he was outnumbered and outgunned, or where he had to rely on his friends and their trust to get out of tough situations. Sam and Bucky should face the same kind of challenges. I want to see what this Captain America's equivalent elevator challenge is, or what Bucky would do if he was faced with a Quinjet bearing down on him. Give us set pieces that strike a balance between grounded heat style action and more heightened superheroics. 
And on that note, maybe Sharon Carter will finally get something decent to do. She was fine considering how little material she had to work with, but the series now has the breathing room to put her front and centre alongside its leads. It would be cool to see her take over the capacity that Widow served in that movie to complete the trifecta with Bucky and Sam. But even though the Disney Plus series has a chance to evoke the 2014 actioner, there's also no way it's going to be a carbon copy. Can you move your seat up? No. In comic books, other characters often take up the mantle of a popular superhero moniker, and it can produce some interesting results. But rarely, if ever, does this become the new status quo. It's more likely a gimmick or temporary change-up to fill the void until the original character comes back from the dead. But I think in the case of the MCU's Captain America passing the mantle to its Falcon, we can expect something a little different, and a lot more intriguing. The nature of movies, even something as serialised as the MCU, are far more permanent. I don't suspect we'll ever see Chris Evans' Cap return to the fold to return things to how they were, or that he would retake the title as is commonplace in the comics. Until Anthony Mackie leaves, this is our new captain, so the series can really take the time to explore what this means going forward and forge a hero just as captivating as Cap Mark 1. I don't think there was a better choice than Sam Wilson and Anthony Mackie to play him. Not only did Marvel find a way to make his wingsuit cool in spite of coexisting in a universe that has two Iron Men and a Vulture, constantly coming up with new and unique ways for him to do more than just flying, Anthony Mackie brings so much charisma and charm to the role that he's impossible to hate. Seriously, does anyone dislike Sam Wilson? What's that? You're writing a comment in the comment section right now? No! We've seen Sam grow across the MCU from a lost military man to a friend to a capable sidekick, and now we're going to see him move up to take one of the most prestigious mantles in all of superherodom. It's probably one of the most exciting change-ups not only come out of Endgame, but the entire cinematic universe as a whole. And I think we can expect an exciting and unique take. When asked about the upcoming series and Sam Wilson's new moniker, Anthony Mackie had this to say. I love Chris. Chris is an amazing cap. To take that over, to be part of that, the legacy of that, is a huge challenge. It's something where a lot of people are going to expect me to be Chris Evans in the same suits, but a black dude, and that's definitely not going to happen. Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers might have the same strict moral code, but their personalities are very different, and I'd like to see how this character would act when tested with real conundrums. Is Sam Wilson the kind of man who would choose to withhold something as important as knowing Bucky killed Tony's parents? What kind of a leader is he? Presumably the Accords are still active in some way, shape or form. How will he respond to them and the governments who pressure its usage? Now that we have a definitive answer as to who will take up the shield, a question that has lingered around characters like Bucky, there's room to start asking the right questions. Who is Bucky if he's not the next Captain America? What is his place in this world? What will he want to do with himself? Bucky has taken up the mantle of the White Wolf, an excellent decision on the part of Marvel Studios as it marks him as his own entity. The White Wolf can now be the identity for Bucky Barnes that will allow him to carve out a unique place for himself amongst the brand's biggest and brightest heroes. Because of these seismic changes to both characters, I'm remaining optimistic that the current official title is a misnomer and will be changed now that we're post Endgame and all of its secrets are out. It would seem like a step back for Bucky to be referred to as the Winter Soldier when he's grown beyond it, and it would be downright stupid for the title to reference the Falcon when Sam Wilson is now the new Captain America. So let's hope and pray the true title gets revealed as Captain America and the White Wolf. These guys are no longer sidekicks, and not only that, they're equals. Partners. Which is why the series can finally give us... What the hell is that? Everyone's got a gimmick now. We've had some excellent solo movies and teen movies across the pantheon of MCU stories since 2008, but we've still yet to have a great two-hander. Aside from Ant-Man and the Wasp, which I think is pretty bad and not really a buddy cop movie anyway, this series could finally give us two leads working together, taking up as much importance in the story equally. And who doesn't love a good buddy cop duo? We've already seen Mackie and Stan prove they have palpable chemistry together. You couldn't have done that earlier. I hate you. They can totally pull off the classic buddy cop journey of hating each other, learning to respect each other, and finally needing each other. Having several episodes to really delve deep into a superhero flavoured buddy cop partnership, as Sam and Bucky dish out justice and root out evil, just sounds fantastic. Sam's charismatic, quipping captain, alongside Bucky's stoic, tortured wolf, is one hell of a good cop, bad cop play. With filming due to begin on the series for a summer 2020 release, we can expect to hear more details very soon. Wherever this show ends up being, I'm confident it's got the talent behind it to really make it one for the books. Or maybe it'll be a big pile of shit and this video will age really badly. Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Bucky and Sam may seem like a match made in heaven, but that's nothing compared to you and your future website made with Squarespace.
Squarespace's world-class design team provides you with loads of brilliant templates which you can customise to your heart's content, but if you mess up and accidentally delete something useful, then it's really easy to restore content that came from your template at any time. If you share a business, like us, then Squarespace allows for multiple contributors to work on your website at once, with multiple access levels including administrator, content editor and store manager among others. Alternatively, if you want to manage more than one website, then you can do so using a single login. It really is that easy to start growing a professional website from scratch, and if you need convincing further, then we can get you a 10% discount, the details of which are in the description below. Just head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you've set everything up, go to squarespace.com slash full fat to save 10% off your first purchase. And remember, stay milky. <coughs>